Bro, this Dragon Ball Super episode was fire, dude. This shit was fire. I was like not home in the weekend, so I apologize for not getting this up, but that shit was fire, dude. That shit was fire. That shit was so good. I, I think the chemistry between Goku and Hit was what really got me most excited about this match. But just in general, Hit. Hit looked like he was being hit <laughs> over and over and over, left and right, back and forth. I mean, it was getting blown away. And then Hit, the strategy. You know, God, Assassin, pulls through, my man. He actually did really fucking good this match. Hi, I'm Double N. Leave a like, subscribe. I want everybody to talk about it in the comments down below about fucking Hit. I even tweeted about it when this happened. Hit is literally one of the greatest things to come out of Dragon Ball Super. Like, if you could sit down right now and you about five things that, like, are just amazingly perfect that came out from Dragon Ball Super... Even though Dragon Ball Super has a lot of flaws, it's some good things that are, a lot of good things are in it. If you could take five things out from the good things that are in it, Hit is definitely one of the people that are in it. Man, I fucking love Hit so much. I think after this episode, made me like Hit even more. You know what I mean? Like, it's still, I think it really still showed that he is a threat. Some people forgot that he was a threat, I'm not gonna lie, because Goku surpassed him. And I'm sitting there like, I don't care if Goku surpassed him. The dude is still a threat. And I think even on the other universes could see, especially Universe 11's God of Destructions and Supreme Kai, they could see that Hit is the soul morale of, you know, the entire team of Universe 6. If Hit dies and Hit is crushed and he's knocked out, well, not dies because then they'd be forfeited, but if Hit is knocked out of the tournament, then Universe 6 is basically done. They will lose their sense of confidence. I and mean, when you have Universe 6 members that are actually doing work, it's honestly just Hit. Um, I, I hate to say it, but Frost. Frost is actually... Yeah, before this episode, Frost was one of the few people that actually got... Uh, or the first person, actually, from Universe 6 to knock out a member. And he knocked a member from Universe 7. Something Universe 6 really wants to do. Something they lost that tournament, so... I mean, fucking rip. Feels bad, right, dude? Um, there's Kale and Kalafa. They're also putting in work, too. You know, Kaba can do some shit as well. And then Hit. Everybody else is just kind of there. You saw Botamo not really doing anything. Magirna. Uh, Magirna. Magirna not really doing anything either. They just collateral damage. You know what I mean? I'm interested to see what the Namekians do. Since it's a twin universe, Planet Namek exists over there. Just like the same planet still exists over there. But I'm interested to see how the Namekians fight over there. If they go some giant form like Lord Slug, I'm going to sit there and be like, bruh. But regardless, we actually saw Disso or Dipso, whatever his name is. Um, I think it's also funny too that everybody referenced that he looks like Beerus. So whatever Beerus is, there's a race behind it. And that's what he is. Because in fact, if you didn't know, Beerus and Shampa, yes, they are twin brothers. But they didn't just start off as God of Destructions. You can tell they were chosen as God of Destructions. So there is a race of them, of other people that look like them, probably more out there. Um, that look like them, and that's why they thought it was funny, like, hey, this dude looks like Beerus, and, like, he lo probably looks more like Beerus because he's skinny, you know what I mean, but, essentially, yeah, so I think, really, what I like, too, is Shampa's pettiness, I mean, the guy was funny, he was cheerleading, he was bragging, I, I fucking love Shampa, I know some people don't like Shampa, I like Shampa, he's funny, he's humorous, uh, he, I just, I just like his attitude, you know what I mean, sure, sometimes it's annoying and sour, but I think in this episode, I really, really liked it you know what i mean he was chilling hit on the entire time i fucking loved it dude i did and especially hit who popped off you could even see topo was gassing up hit the knowledgeable fighters even jiren you could see some sort of reaction some smug reaction he's like oh wow he's actually doing pretty good against dipso i thought dipso had the upper hand on them cut type of reaction you know what i mean you can see jiren's little smug reaction towards the fight between hit and dipso because the two top level players from universe 11 could see that hit is adapting it's almost like he's taking the blows just to kind of get used to the pattern of his blows. And then he's going to mentally mess around with them using his um, his time skipped ability. And if you didn't know, fun fact, now we know in this episode, his muscles move. And you can hear small noises from every single movement when he does a time skip. And that's what Dipso does. He, he, acts, he acts on that with his bunny ears. So he has insanely good hearing and insanely speed. They even mentioned he can, he's faster than speed and light. But I mean... A lot of characters from Dragon Ball are faster than speed and light, or can actually hit that limit if they could, but 
So it's not anything to brag about, but it's, it's still something to brag about. You know what I mean? It's like, we get a buddy a lot can do it, but you can do it too. That's cool. That's cool. But he essentially amps up his speed to the max um, just so before he's about to do the time skip ability. That way that he makes it null and void. But what he doesn't understand is that Hit is an assassin. All he has to do is play around his head. And assassins are great at messing around with your head. So what he did is he would turn it on and then turn it off whenever he would want. You know what I mean? Like, he would basically bait him. He would bait Dipso to play it like he would use it, but then not actually be using it. You know what I mean? He's like a slight second to turn it off, and then push. He'd be bamming him, punching him and shit. He beat the shit out of him, dude. Of course, he was getting his ass handed to. I mean, he almost fell off, and it made me annoyed as a dude that helped out Dipso because he literally had the upper hand. The one thing that he has against Dipso is, number one, experience, and number two, technique. Because even Goku mentioned it when Goku first pulled up with his Super Saiyan God technique. Which, fun fact, is faster than Super Saiyan and it drains less stamina than Blue. So, it's basically one of his fastest forms. You know what I mean? It's like a speed form, you could almost say. It's like Dax's speed. It's one of his fastest forms. And it takes a lot less stamina. So, it's way easier to maintain and stay in control. They actually mentioned this in the manga as well in the Goku Black arc. So, I like that they actually brought in the anime. They mentioned that in Goku Black arc. I, I like that. I did. I did like that. Not gonna lie. Two thumbs up. I, it's honestly one of my favorite transformations. I like how it looks. I like the godlike heaven sent music they play every time it pops up. I caught Barris movie vibes when it first pulled up. That's the last time we saw it in animation form. So I'm hoping Vegeta goes into it too because it is the same for Vegeta. It's a faster state and it takes up less stamina. And Vegeta also used it in the manga. I made a video about that. So I'm hoping that Vegeta uses it as well. Goku pulled up and saved Hit last second. I think it was pretty fucking cool. Uh, it's a nice way to repay him back since he threw that match against Manaka in the Universe 6 versus Universe 7 tournament. It's a nice way to pay how much back being all like, hey, buddy, now, now we're cool. Now we're even. <laughs> you know what I mean, dude? But I, I think I like the bomb between the two. You know what I mean? It's like, don't touch his prey. It's mine. Kind of that bold rivalry. It's kind of like a Vegeta and Goku rivalry, except without all the anger. You know what I mean, dude? But I like that Goku is a fighting genius. I think it even shows even more now every time when he fights. He adapted insanely fast. He overwhelmed Dipso. He can keep up with his speed. And not to mention as well that he even mentioned that it's flawed. His technique is flawed because it's basic. Like, he has the speed, but when he doesn't really have the technique to go along with it, is it really anything to have? You know? And I like that Goku mentioned that because it's something that Hit didn't see. So, also something to show between the gap between Goku and Hit. Because the first time we saw Hit, it was, it was pretty overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. Goku got his ass beat first time we saw Hit. Um, shit was fucking cool, though. I love this episode so goddamn much. The tag team of Goku and Hit. I'm so excited. Guys, if you enjoyed, sub a like, subscribe. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments down below. We have Roshi next week. So, I'm interested to see what Roshi does next week. You see a My Hero review probably out tomorrow. I only said it because I didn't watch it. I've been kind of preoccupied, so I apologize. But you'll see three uploads tomorrow. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I am the Nexus. Goodbye.